So let's continue with the most important wine regions in Germany, which there are on, on the one side, we have picked the Mosel. You see it here on the left hand side where it flows coming from France upwards towards northeast and at some point it flows into the Rhine. And then we also picked Rheingau, uh, a quite small region, nevertheless quite prestigious, quite well known internationally. And in the following, um, I will introduce and explain those regions a bit more in detail to you. Starting with the Mosel, initially known as Mosel Saar Ruba, in 2007, nevertheless, there was a change um, to simplify and to avoid misunderstandings that it might be a plan from several regions. Uh, legislation decided to simplify the term and just call that region Mosel. Nevertheless, on many, many old labels, for sure, you still find the term Mosel Zaruva, which also indicates that it is not just the Mosel in charge of the wines um, from that region, because we also have some side rivers. The Mosel River is about 545 kilometer. It's the longest tributary to the Rhine. 208 kilometer of which are in Germany. Nevertheless, the Mosel comes from France, where it has its uh, spring in the Vosges, and then it flows northeasternwards um, along the border with Luxembourg and Germany. Um, and which you might know that Schengen is um, a village giving its name to a quite important contract for the European Union. Nevertheless, it's also quite interesting spot for viticulture, which you might discover a bit more in detail in those lectures that are about um, Luxembourgish viticulture and wines from there. Nevertheless, we have in Germany 208 kilometers of viticulture starting in Perl and then going till Koblenz, where the Mosel flows into the Rhine. The Mosel has two small tributaries, um, the Saar and the Ruba, which we also introduce a bit more in the coming slides. The Mosel is famous for producing some of the world's greatest Rieslings. Um, it is considered, furthermore, the oldest wine region in Germany. Already the Romans brought their first vines to start viticulture here. We have nowadays around 5,000 wine growers that cultivate nowadays in total 8,744 hectares across 125 wine towns. 20, 30 years ago, it was a bit, even a bit more. We had up to 12,500 um, hectares of viticulture, but it shrinked a bit more together to the really core um, of good vineyards for viticulture. That map here is also a quite unique um, card. Long before there was uh, a first appellation in Medoc created um, in Germany, the um, Authorities came up with a map and the darker the color is here, starting from a yellowish to brownish, the better the quality of those vineyards was and due to that higher the prices and due to strict laws and taxations in the end, the value in terms of taxation for the authorities. And when we follow that river here and we see that many turns, we easily see where is the ideal south facing vineyards followed. And um, there you see it easily that we find here better suitable vineyard land compared than the opposite side of uh, the river bank where we are facing northernwards. Um, quite unique, quite old map, really interesting to discover that already more than 100 years ago, 120 years ago, um, such an 
kind of classification of single vineyards was already done. The Mosel can be divided into three main sections. The Upper Mosel or Obermosel in German. It's around about 45 kilometer long. It's um, from Perl, close by Schengen, to shortly before the city of Trier. Then we have the Middle Mosel, which is approximately 120 kilometers long. It's from starting from the city of Trier and then until Zell, uh, which is the last, largest part of the Mosel and probably the one of the most pre prestigious wine producers along the Mosel. And then we have the Lower Mosel um, or Terrassen Mosel or Unter Mosel, as we call it in German. It's around about 100 kilometers long. It's also called as I indicated, Terrassen Mosel, and it goes from Pünderich till Koblenz. Here a bit more um, precise, six subcategories in official terms important, um, which we call here in Germany Bereich. Um, we have the first part called Moseltor, which is just for the federal state of Saarland, the city of Perl and um, the other uh, villages belonging to it. It's just in charge of 126 hectares. Um, and the Obermosel, then afterwards, it's from Palsum until Eagle, close by to Trier. In general, Mosel Tor and Obermosel, they are not the same in terms of viticulture and the same in terms of uh, soils what we have in mind when it is about the Mosel. Here we find um, soils which are still defined by the Basin of Paris and which are clay rich, vigorous, with a good holding water holding capacity, not that many steep slopes here. Um, the Tsar the side river coming uh, also from France and floating into Cons into the Mosul is from Zerich until Cons in charge of 791 hectares and soil wise and also wine style wise similar to those of the Mosul. Nevertheless, it's a little bit a cooler spot here. The Ruvertal, similar story, also a side river which is floating close by to Trier into the Mosel and from Sommerau in the upper part till uh, Ruva, where the Ruva goes into the Mosel, it's 177 hectares, also compared to the middle Mosel, a spot where we find a bit cooler conditions um, in terms of viticulture. Then the Bereich Bernkastel, which is in charge of those vineyards from Trier until Priedel. They are in charge of 5,646 hectares. And then we have the other Bereich, which is called Burkochem. And this is going from Zell until Koblenz and which is in charge of 1,190 hectares in total.